Lincoln Clay. Now let us do a little story recap, shall we? He's the main protagonist of Mafia 3, born in January 1945. His mother abandoned him two years later, sadly, in 1947, and he was taken into the St. Michelle's Orphanage in New Bordeaux. Many years later, in 1958, he was taken in by Sammy Robinson and his wife Perla along with their son Illis, who became like family to him. In 1964, he joined the US military and fought in the Vietnam War, eventually serving into the 5th Special Forces Group. And when he gets back home in New Bordeaux, he reunites with the Robinsons, who are now hosting a criminal empire named Black Mob. And oh, there's a plot twist. He's betrayed, and now he wants revenge and won't stop until, little by little, head by head, his enemies disappear. Okay, let's do this. Just know, it's gonna be a deep dive. So, take your popcorn. <laughs> So, due to his time serving in the army, oh, Lincoln clearly got some solid physical fitness training, uh, military training, so it's a hard type of training. And right here from this website, theartofmanliness.com, I found the history of the army's PT tests. And right here it says that the army took the lessons it had learned in Korea, in the Korean War in 1950s, and began to draw up new standards for soldiers' physical fitness, once aimed specifically at enhancing their focus on combat readiness. The necessity of these efforts was made clear as combat operations in Vietnam got underway in the 60s, exactly the war which Lincoln fought in and the military got real-time data back from the field as to how soldiers needed to be trained in order to withstand the kind of guerrilla warfare being waged in the jungles of Southeast Asia. And right here, the training emphasized exercises that develop strength, muscular endurance, and aerobic and aerobic capacity, agility, coordination, as well as the attainment of proficiency in certain military physical skills, which are essential to personal safety and effective combat performance. So these 11 skills are like the golden standard of military training at that time. Um, so the first is running distance and sprint running on road and cross country so uh, from here we can take that we're gonna do some sprints and we're gonna do some long distance running uh, jumping broad jumping and vertical jumping downward from a height uh, we're gonna do squat jumps and jumping lunges dodging change of body direction rapidly while running so what I'm thinking of right here right uh, will be like a uh, rotational exercise, like a um, cable rotational exercise or a band rotational exercise to train those those obliques. Climbing and tra traversing, vertical climbing of rope, poles, walls and cargo nets, transversing horizontal objects such as ropes, pipes and ladders. Um, so we're gonna do either parkour or rope climbing rope climbing, I love rope climbing, we're gonna do, um, or if you have access to rock climbing, it will be awesome, crawling, high crawl and low crawl for speed and health, yeah, this is fun, <laughs> crawling, so maybe do this as well, throwing, uh, propelling objects such as grenades for distance and accuracy, mad ball slams, if you have access to them, if not, just do some explosive knuckle push-ups, uh, but <laughs> you're gonna hurt your knuckles, so build up to that. Vaulting, submarine low objects such as fences and barriers by use of hand assists, so parkour, pretty much. Carrying, carrying objects and employment of man carries, loaded carries, farmer's walks. Uh, balancing, maintaining proper body balance on narrow walkways and at heights above normal, so balancing will be like exercise like uh, pistol squats, um, maybe even Bulgarian split squats and the gymnastic rings will be a great, great tool for enhancing balance. Falling, contact with the ground from standing, running and jumping posture, so falling just parkour pretty much, and swimming in specialized situations, employment of water survival techniques. Yeah, swimming is great, it's great. It's a great form of exercise. So. Uh, 
this is the military training part. Lincoln Clay looks like a bodybuilder. This is a fact. You cannot deny this. He may not be as lean or shredded, but you clearly can say that he works out. And in the 1960s, bodybuilding was starting to grow immensely. There was the time of Dave Draper, Sergio Oliva, and the king himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in the 60s, the training was simple. It's something you'd call power building nowadays. It had a lot of heavy compound strength moves. So, things like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, clean and press, power cleans, military presses, uh, rows, t-bar rows, pull-ups, and all of this stuff that is really useful for strength. Well, uh, fuck this video, I'm trying to doubt. Man, let me tell you something, boxing in the 60s was tense. Not that I lived through it, but our man himself, Lincoln, has lived through it and he has demonstrated some powerful and skillful fucking moves in boxing. So, this is what we're gonna do about that. We got the six boxing punch numbers, the six basic techniques, the only techniques we're gonna focus on. If you can do heavy bag work, go for it. But as that don't have equipment like that, we're gonna do shadow boxing. So, we got one, the jab, two, the cross, three, the lead hook, for the rear hook, five the lead uppercut, and six the rear uppercut. Just practice these six techniques, and you're good to go.